Hello and welcome to chapter 16, the respiratory system. Now, before we get started on the actual lecture, I want to make sure that you have your CPT manuals ready and your step-by-step -step manual. Um, on the post above today uh, or below or whichever, I listed your objectives for chapter 16. So I just want to show you once more in your step-by-step -step manual, this is chapter 16, and these are the objectives we're gonna be going through. Not only are we gonna talk about them, you guys have your chapter 16 PowerPoint slides in your folder on Edmodo. If you're looking at your Edmodo screen, if you look to the left, there's a little tab that says folders. You just click it and then you're gonna pick PowerPoint and then you're gonna go to chapter 16 PowerPoint and you can re uh, refer to those as you're reading your chapter. But we are gonna be talking about these different um, objectives and I'm gonna try to list the objective and uh, show you uh, where I'm reading from or where I'm explaining from, things of that nature. So sorry, guys, I did not turn my ringer off. So give me just a moment to do that. There we go, all silence. All right, so let's begin. Putting my things away and trying to get organized, as organized as possible. I know this is a kind of a different way of looking at things, still working on perfecting this little method we have going on, but so far you guys have liked it. Um, attached to this particular post, our lesson post that has our Zoom lecture on it and your reading assignment, there's going to be this document attached. And all this document says is the easiest ways to search for a respiratory surgery code is number one by procedure, number two by anatomic site, and number three by condition. And it's going to give you key terms for respiratory surgery. These are things that you're going to be seeing a lot of. Okay, so that will be there for your um, viewing. All right, let's talk about how the respiratory system is actually broken up in the CPT. Well, I'm actually in our respiratory section. See my green tab says respiratory. Um, it's broken up into by anatomic site, for example, nose. And you guys will see that I have my nose tab here. I made my little tabs, but by nose. And then it's gonna be further uh, divided into uh, incision, excision, introduction. It's actually by um, procedure. So it's initially broken up into anatomic site, then it's gonna have your procedures. So you have nose, sinuses, larynx, that's the larynx, bronchii and trachea, pleura and lungs. And this is all those procedures for pleura and lungs. So let's go back to the beginning of our respiratory. Okay. So now we know how they're actually divided. So our um, learning objective number one says differentiate, differentiate between services reported with codes from the respiratory subsection and those reported with codes from other subsections. So what does that mean? For example, an arthroscopy is placed at the end of your musculoskeletal system. But in the respiratory section, they're gonna be placed throughout. So let's just look, we're in the respiratory section. Well, am I just missing it? Let me, well, here we go, endoscopy. So let me go back and see if I just missed endoscopy. I did. So we're actually in the sinuses and endoscopy is here. It's not gonna be found at the very back the way it was when we go back to our musculoskeletal system. Remember we labeled endoscopy and arthroscopy. We labeled it because they're all listed at the end. But when we go to the respiratory system, it's going to be listed 
behind or throughout. So endoscopy for our sinuses are here. Endoscopy for our bronchi and trachea here. So you get you get the gist of that. Let's talk about um, uh, some fracture repairs. So where would you do a fracture repair of the nose? Well, that's going to be in the musculoskeletal system because you actually have a fracture of your nasal bone. So that's part of your musculoskeletal system. The throat or mouth procedures are in the digestive system. So we just have to stop and think about, okay, just because it's the throat and when we're swallowing, that's digestive. But if we're breathing, that's respiratory, right? I hope that you understand that, but it just takes a moment to stop and think about what are we dealing with? If we're dealing with a fracture of the bone, the nasal bone, that's not gonna be respiratory. If we're dealing with the inability to swallow, that's going to be our digestive system. If we can't breathe, if there's a blockage in breathing, well then obviously that's our respiratory because then we can't breathe. Okay, so I hope that that made sense. We're gonna begin to move on to, uh, are we gonna go ahead and move on to chapter, uh, objective two? Explain the effects of extent approach when reporting endoscopy respiratory procedures. So what is approach? What does that actually mean? Well, I looked up the definition just so I could read it. When coding surgical procedures, the approach is the technique you use to reach the site of the procedure. So I just kind of uh, went through and highlighted some approach to tell you how that applies to coding in a CPT. So if you look at CPT code 30117, it says the internal approach. If we look at 30130, it's any method. 40 is any method. So that's what they're talking about. When you're looking for approaches, you're gonna have to, when you actually look at your CPT code and you're looking to read to make sure that your medical records or your scenario matches, you have to look to see if there's an approach listed. For example, internal approach. So that's the only thing that that objective is pointing out. You have to be cognizant of your approaches. The next thing that we're gonna go into is endoscopy. I know that there's not uh, objective number three. Objective number three is identify highlights of nasal procedure coding. Well, we really can't do much until we look at endoscopy. So this is going to take a little bit of time. So I want you to kind of get ready to listen, get ready to look and get ready to research. The very first thing I want to do is I want to no I had a video but it didn't uh, it didn't uh, load for me so we're just going to go into the speaking about it and I'll find the video later and um, put it in for you guys one day this week so let's talk about the rules of endoscopy coding um, where are you going to find these you'll find these on your slides so I'm actually pulling my slides over so you guys can see. This is where I'm pulling from, but you guys can look at this on the slides that you have available for you. So what are the endoscopy rules? Well, you have to code to the fullest extent. Example, the procedure begins at the mouth and ends at the bronchial tube. So where are you gonna code to? Are you just gonna stop at the mouth? No, you go to the full extent, which is the bronchial tube. I think you guys understand that. I think that that, you all will get that, okay? Rule number two, code the correct approach. For example, for removal, interior lung lesion via endoscopy inserted through the mouth, exterior lung lesion via endoscopy through the skin. 
So the first one was through the mouth and the other was through the skin. They're approaching through the mouth or they're approaching through the skin. The incorrect approach equals incorrect code, which will equal incorrect reimbursement. So you guys need to pay very, very close attention when coding. Read above and below each code to make sure that you're where you need to be. Surgical always includes diagnostic. For example, a diagnostic bronchial endoscopy begins it identifies the foreign body, and then we remove the foreign body. So that becomes a surgical endoscopy. Now, if we would have done a diagnostic bronchial endoscopy and we didn't find anything, then we're only going to be coding for that diagnostic bron bronchial endoscopy. But since we found a foreign body and we removed it surgically, that means the code increases. It means we get paid more money. And that is a, a valid medical record. That is medical necessity. That code will validate what you've done. Because yeah, you began as a diagnostic bronchial endoscopy, but we found like, uh, we found that the patient had a marble lodge there and we were able to remove it surgically. And so your medical records are going to indicate what you did and why you did it. All right, so I'm gonna pull these away and we're going to talk about endoscopy. Why? Well, because to me, we, don't, we didn't get enough of that the last time we talked about it. You guys are going to have this document and I'm just gonna move the document over to you so you can see. This document is going to be loaded for you. This is what I really, really loved. It's the type of endoscopy. And it just lists those for you. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what I have done and how that will help me in my CPT. You remember when we made some notes on the back of the musculoskeletal system and we have endoscopy and arthroscopy here. Well, I made some more notes in my CPT. I went through and I copied the type of endoscopies, the tools used during an endoscopy. And then I wrote some of this chart. I drew in some of the chart that is listed here. And then I put the CPT codes that were attached to those. I find that that is such an easy way for me to learn. And so I wanna be able to refer to it because for example, if we have, um, let me just read a scenario for you. And I'm looking for it, hang on. A removal of a lung cyst by major thoroctomy. Well, what's a thoroctomy? Well, are we gonna have that in our um, CPT book? Yep, we are. We are gonna have that. But I don't want you to get the octomies mixed up. <laughs> the laryngoscopies, the arthroscopies, the endoscopies. We really need to have a really good understanding of what is attached to an endoscopy and what it can turn into and um, how, they re uh, how they actually transfer over to what part of the CPT that we're doing. So I just thought it was a great idea to actually uh, just give that some more effort, give that some more definition. So that's what I did. Okay, now we're going to talk about um, it's going to be uh, objectives, learning objectives three. Through seven. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're simply going to begin to go through our CPT the way we've been doing. Okay, first of all, 
I want to show you how I've labeled. And I'm hoping that you can see that well enough. Here, I'm gonna pick you up and it might jiggle, forgive me. But you see, I have my nose, my sinuses, my larynx, my bronchi, my lungs. Now I'm going to put you back up here and give me some time to readjust, okay? There we go. All right, you guys can see my notes that I've made here. This just made me feel more comfortable about my endoscopies and what I'm looking at when I'm looking at all of those, like the thoroscopy or the laryngoscopy, um, the bronchioscopy. I really wanted to have more um, light on that. I didn't want to feel nervous about all of those tests. Okay, so let's go into our nose section. So here's our nose, then we have incision, excision, introduction, and the removal of foreign body. So you guys can see how I like to make my little lines, put them in different sections and make notes on the side. I didn't make a lot of notes here, but I wanna point out removal of the foreign body. We just talked a little bit about removals. So if we're removal, removing a foreign bottle, uh, a foreign body from our nose, well, this is where we're gonna find those codes. So let's read those. Removal of foreign body, intranasal, office type procedure. So if your daughter, like mine did, sticks a Barbie shoe up her nose and we have to go have it removed in the office type of a procedure, then this is where we're gonna find that. Removal of Barbie shoe from Anna Grace's nostril. <laughs> so we have um, requiring general anesthesia, bilaterally rhino rhinotomy. So you have those in your removals. Okay, then the repairs. If we're talking about a rhinoplasty, then here's a repair of the nasal vestibule. And you can see that I've read through and I know that that's the nasal vestibule. So that's our nose section. And we just continue on. This is destruction, nasal hemorrhage. What's a nasal, hem nasal hemorrhage? Well, if you have a severe nosebleed and you have to have it cauterized, this is where we're gonna go. Then this is our accessory sinuses, incision, sinusostomy, frontal, and then I wrote a definition. Sinus, sinusotomy, frontal, involves the use of telescopes and cameras through the nose. So you can see that I've written myself some notes there. And then we're moving into the endoscopy. Let's see what the first line says. A surgical sinus endoscopy includes a sinusotomy when, a, I'm sorry, I have to stop reading, when appropriate and diagnostic endoscopy. Okay, so it's hard for me to read upside down, I'm sorry. So this is about, the next is about dilation. And then I just have read through and um, highlighted what I thought I needed to know. So you guys read through these sections, highlight what you think you need to know, what you feel is important. Then we're coming across and we're just continuing on here. Sinuses have quite a bit. In here, we have the larynx right here. I'm giving you time just to look at it and catch up. Here, we go straight into these endoscopies. So there's a lot of different kind of endoscopies for the larynx. So get in, highlight, make notes, research. Then here's the repair of the larynx. Trachea and bronchi. 
everything about trachea and bronchi is right here. And then here we start our endoscopies with the trachea and the bronchi. Now here's our lungs and our pleura. Here is a thoroscopy. Do you recognize that from our notes back here? Thoroscopy, sorry, thoroscopy. And then it just continues on. This is not a huge section. Okay, sound pretty easy? I hope so. Now, I am going to give you a coding scenario, and I'm just going to hold my paper. I hope you can see that. It's a simple excision of a nasal polyp. Simple excision of a nasal polyp. How do we look that up. What did we do? We did an excision. But let's first go back to our respiratory system. So where's our nasal? It's our nose, right? So what are we doing? We're doing an excision. These are excisions, right? Oh, sorry. I got to get y'all closer. I'm going to. These are excisions right here. Excision, nasal polyp, simple. Did I even have to go to my index? I didn't because I knew my excisions were there. I knew that my polyps were there, but I didn't write it. So this is what I'm gonna do right now so you guys can see. I'm gonna write P-O-L-Y-P-S, simple. And I'm gonna write P-O-L-Y-P-S, Extensive. See what I did there? I'm hoping that's not too blurry. All right, but now I'm going to look it up. Let's say the index way. So what am I going to do? I'm going to try to push this out just a little bit so I can be here. All right. I'm going to my index. Remember, I have my index all labeled with my alphabet. So I'm going to go to excision because that's what we did. Simple excision of a nasal polyp. So I'm going to E, opening it. Now I'm going to look for excision, and I'm just looking through alphabetically. So I found excision right here, excision. So excision of what? What is our anatomic site? Remember? Procedure, anatomic site. So our anatomic site is nose. So I'm looking for the nose. Right at the bottom is my nose right here. And what was it? A polyp. It gives me codes 30110 through 30115. So when I go back over here to my respiratory system, I look at 30100. I'm sorry, 30110, excision, nasal, nasal polyp, simple. Now, if I look at 30100 above, that's a biopsy intranasal. So I know that that's not what I'm looking for. And then I look below, and that's excision, nasal polyps, extensive. So I know that's not what I'm looking for. I know that that one in the middle, the simple, is correct. Okay. Let's do one more together.
and I'm just, this was an exercise that I just off the cuff decided to do with you guys. Okay, so removal of a lung cyst by major thoracotomy. So where are we? We're in the lung. What's the lung? So it's the lungs and the pleura. Okay, so what did we do? We did a removal. So let's start looking at incision, excision, removal. So I'm kind of reading for removal. So there's a lot of these, right? Well, that's not as easy as our nose. So to me, I'm like, I don't want to look for all of that. So what did we do? We did a thoracotomy, right? So let's go to our index and do it this way. There's not just one way to do it. So you can sit and read through all of those codes if you want to, but there's no reason to do that. So let's go to thoracotomy, T-H-R-A, octomy. Now be very, very careful because you're gonna have thoroscopy, uh, all kinds of different ones. So we need to match them up, thoroctomy. So I found my thoroctomy here, but I always double check. What am I looking for? Am I looking for a thoroscopy or am I looking at a thoroscotomy? I'm looking at thoractomy. I have it right here. So thoractomy, and what did we did, do? We did a removal. So I go thoractomy, removal. What did we remove? Assist, assist. So thoractomy, removal, cyst. And it gives me three, two, one, four, zero. All right, well, that was quicker. Sometimes the traditional way, which is through the index, is quicker. So let's go back to our respiratory system. And let's look. Well, where did I go? Here I am. I'm in the wrong spot. So I want, I'm in the lungs and the pleura. And let's look at three, two, one, four, zero. Okay. If we go to three, two, one, Hundred says thoractomy with exploration. One four zero says with cyst removal includes plural procedure when performed. So our answer is three two one four zero. Did that make sense? I hope so. I hope that you guys enjoyed that and it made sense. Um, I'm trying to do things through the CPT because I just find that to me, it helps me learn better. I'm sorry, I'm mucking with this. <laughs> Hi. Anyway, so I hope that you enjoyed the lecture. I hope that you learned what you needed to learn. Um, I want to remind you, you have your reading assignment, um, get it done. Stop in between sections and let me show you what I mean. I'm going to pull my book. What you should be doing is you should be doing your reading. You look at your quick check and you do your exercise before moving on. I know that a lot of times I assign these after, but if you do your reading and do this, you know that you know that the process is the same. Reading, chapter exercises, review, workbook, coding packet if we have time exam. So you guys know the process. You know that we are um, on a schedule. You know that we're doing that to-do list every single time. So um, if you just get in the groove of it and you understand what the process is, it's the same process every time. You guys can get your work done in a uh, very timely manner because you know what the process is. All right. Well, that is the end of lecture for chapter 16, the respiratory system. I'm excited about your uh, lung projects. And um, I want to just say again that um, we'll be doing a Zoom Friday at two o'clock for you to demonstrate your 3D lung project that can, or you can send me a video demonstrating it. So um, it's gonna be up to you guys to let me know how you wanna do that and when you want to do that. 
um, or not when, you have to have it in to me by two o'clock on Friday. You guys have a great afternoon and I'll talk to you soon.